Okay, so we're going to talk about osmoregulation now. So, effectively, the kidney has already reabsorbed a lot of the water that's been filtered out because, you know, it's sort of eighty percent has been reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule. We've then had more water reabsorbed and put back into the bloodstream from the descending loop of the um, limb of the loop of Homme, and then. We've got the sort of fine control going on in the collecting duct. Now that really depends on your water balance. So it depends on how much water you've had to drink and how much water and, and taken in in food and how much water you've lost through sweating and breathing out and urinating. So we're going to do sort of two scenarios. We're going to do what happens if you uh, get dehydrated and then what happens if you're sort of overly hydrated. So, if you're dehydrated, that means that your water balance is out of whack in that you haven't taken enough water in to cope with your water loss. So, what that means for the body is that really you want to absorb some more water out of the filtrate and put it back into the bloodstream so that you've got enough water in your bloodstream. And this whole thing is controlled by a region of the brain called the hypothalamus. I have really got room to write it, not going to bother. So, hypothalamus. The hypothalamus detects the water potential of the blood. So, if you have not taken enough liquid in uh, or given too much out, then the water potential of the blood will fall. It will get more negative as the solute concentration goes up in your blood and the hypothalamus has receptors to detect that. It's connected to an area of the brain called the posterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary is like a little hormone store so that is the thing that is going to uh, be the effector in this system so the receptor stroke coordinator is the hypothalamus, the effector is the gland, the posterior pituitary gland and its response is to release this hormone called antidiuretic hormone. Now a diuretic is a drug, a medicine that makes you wee. So an antidiuretic is something that stops you weeing. So it is going to lower the volume of urine produced just purely because you're taking more water out of this filtrate and putting it back into the bloodstream. So the antidiuretic hormone um, heads off around the bloodstream, all hormones are released into the bloodstream and it reaches the cells of the collecting duct just in the normal circulation. And what it does when it gets there is if you've got ADH here, it actually, uh, inside the cells of the collecting duct there are little vesicles with little osmosis water channels in called aquaporins and what it does is it sends more of those to the membrane so that the membrane contains more water channels. With more water channels then more water can exit the filtrate and head back into the blood. So the water content of the blood goes up but the water content of the uh, filtrate goes down. Now how we express that, uh, they're not likely to ask you about aquaporins but you never know, is that we say that the ADH links onto the receptors on the cell and increases its permeability to water. Now you must say it's to water because otherwise it could be to anything so it has to be to water. What happens then is we get more water reabsorbed into the blood. There's less than heading down through the collecting duct. Water can be absorbed all the way down because of this water potential gradient down the, through the medulla, as you remember caused by the loop of <coughs> Henle, and we produce a very low volume of concentrated urine. So, low water potential, Hypothalamus, receptors, posterior pituitary, release of ADH or antidiuretic hormone, increases permeability of collecting duct, a small volume of highly concentrated urine produced. Now if you're sort of, you know, during the day and you're sitting at college and you're bored in lessons and you're glugging down water like it's going out of fashion just because you're bored, 
uh, you're then constantly asking to go to the toilet and the reason for that is that as you glug more water it gets absorbed into the bloodstream and the water potential of your blood rises above what it should do. Again, the hypothalamus detects that, it sends an impulse to the posterior pituitary and this time it says, right, you know, hey, uh, don't produce any of that ADH stuff, we don't want to reabsorb any more water, we're awash. So there's little or less ADH. The permeability then, we don't get these extra aquaporins in, the permeability remains uh, as it is usually, which is fairly impermeable, and all of the water that has been, that has got down to here, effectively leaves in the urine very large volumes of very dilute urine. And that's kind of the, the story, and you need to know both sides of that story. Okay, see you next time.